Hi guys. Uh, so today I'll, I don't really have any slides prepared, but I'll just I'll try to go through some of the. I'll, my name is Michael Michael Cheng. Uh, I'm a software engineer. I build web applications and stuff. Um, today I'll what I'll be sharing with you is something about uh, my experiences building some of the uh, little, small little projects that I did at Hackerspace. Uh, so two of the projects I would probably want to highlight is one is uh, how we how we hacked up a little uh, door access uh, uh, system using the, uh, using a Arduino and Raspberry Pi and a bunch of other stuff. So the evolution started something like this. Um, so first of all, can you see it? Oh shit, I can't see. Yeah. Yeah, so it first there was a challenge, right? So at Hackerspace, there were like there was a magnetic door lock uh, with the front door, and uh, basically we were thinking about let's try and make this internet, or rather let's try and make do some hack with this, right? Because it's some, everyone keeps using their pin to get in. So like I say I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if you could like take out your phone or you walk towards it or something? Yeah, you, you know that you're going there. It unlocks and you can just walk right in. You know, so that was the idea behind it. And then we did a bit of tinkering and found that behind the, the number pad, there's actually two wires. Like if you touch them together, <laughs> it, it unlocks the door. <laughs> <laughs> so touching two wires together is pretty simple. So basically, you know, um, uh, to bear in mind, I have, I have no electronics training. So it was some small little lessons I've gone through with Dave Appleton on, on Arduino programming and some little tinkering I've done on myself. Uh, so, pardon my layman explanation on some of these hard to understand things. Uh, so, so basically, touching two, two wires together is pretty simple. You do a relay, a normally open uh, in normally open mode, right? So you just have an Arduino like send a signal and then just touch two cables together, voila, you know, and then the door will open. That's cool. So the first iteration was somewhat like. Um, yeah, so here's, here's uh, those part, bit of slides that I did previous, uh, back in 2012. Uh, this one of the experiments. So how do I do a button that will have two LEDs, right? So I press a button, two LED lights and go off. Um, uh, and yeah, so and then uh, later on it became like a relay shield. So from an Arduino, I bought a relay shield on top of it. I used and I programmed it such that you would basically touch two things together. And basically, you open the door. So it's kind of like you press a button, light, LED lights, LED lights up, and you know opens the door. So that was kind of like the first iteration of it. It seemed to work, um, right? So Arduino's with a, with a relay, with a, with a button on the, on the breadboard, and the two, uh, two LED lights that shows me when it's all open or closed, like green and green and red. Um, and the next thing I did was, okay, wouldn't it be cool that if we have like an infrared sensor that people could just, because in the old hacker space, it was, like a, it was on the second floor. So what I wanted was people, when people coming down the stairs, I wanted them to like walk past the sensor and then the door unlocks and immediately just, you know, I'm too lazy to just press a button, right? I just want to pull the door open and walk out, right? So, um, so there's so many times you walk down the stairs, like, ah, shit, forgot to pr press to open the door, I got to press again. So I'm a bit lazy there. So I went and did, did some research on how to actually do up a little infrared sensor, uh, and where and yeah. So there was a so the Arduino had a, now now has a inter, has a infrared sensor, and then you, when you pass by the beam, it was a bit of a, a bit of a hack. A good, uh, it was a bit of a Google uh, requires a lot of my Google fool to kind of find out how to actually program the Arduino in a way. I can actually, the project is actually on online. You can find them on my GitHub. Um, this is a complete project, but you can I can show you the code. Hopefully, don't laugh at me. It's not that pretty. Yeah, so the, it checks the sensor. It gets the distance. Uh, so bear in mind, my software I'm a software guy by 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 heart. So I kind of look stuff look for stuff like this. So basically, you read analog signal and then from the IR pin. And then t t finds the finds the voltage, and if it's beyond a certain level, it kind of says, "Aha, this guy is near." So now, yeah, it was a bit of tuning before we could get it right. So I got it working. So it was I was able to like walk down the stairs, walk past the infrared, the door, the relays fires, pr pr uh, touch those two cables together, and then the door is open. I can just walk out. So that was like the next cool thing. Yes. 
So the next, so all this is done. So let's. So the next cool thing, the next progression was like, wouldn't it be cool <laughs> if I could like make this like a web application? I could just whip out my phone and open a web web like web page and then press a button and it kind of like opens for me. Like when people down, we're quite lazy, right? Because on the second floor, I space on the second floor, people will come to the door and they'll press a button. They'll press a buzzer. I have to walk all the way down and then press the button and let the guy in and stuff. So I wanted to like be lazy. So it's like we just whip out the phone uh, and then you know um, uh, uh, loads a page, press a button and it opens up. Uh, and, and the interface. So I did the interface first. Uh, it looks something like this eventually, right? It looks something like this. So this is the ideal ideal scenario, right? Loads a page. Open door, door open. Yes, the guy is in. Um, then of course we gotta got we gotta shout down the stairs. Doors open, and then the guy got can come in, right? So it's, although in a noisy night, um, you can, the guy downstairs can't hear. You still have to walk down the stairs, so that kind of <laughs> defeats the purpose. So that's that kind of sucks. But anyway, uh, okay. Anyway, so uh, from let's just jump back quick a little bit. So this is how the infrared sensor kind of looks like. So there's a little uh, sh it's infrared sensor from Sharp. So I just bought it and then I tweaked around with it and it kind of worked. So the way I, kind of, I, kind of play, the way I was playing around with it was like putting my hand down and, oh, hey, it's near, it's near. Yes, it, it blinks, it blinks the LED. Yes, it works. But then when you bring it downstairs and you mount it on the staircase and stuff, it doesn't quite work that way. So I was like figuring out where do we put the damn thing, right? Do we like put a, I was thinking like above the ceiling, right? Looking down, and then when a guy walk past, and then you cross the beam. No, what if the guy like goes this way or that way? He doesn't, he doesn't cross the beam, right? So it was a bit of figuring out where is the best uh, optimal uh, positioning. It was like, on the left, uh, on the handle where you where the hand grip is, and then you know you walk past, and yeah. Anyway, that was uh, so. From a relay shoe, I upgraded to a little. I thought, wow, a relay shoe with four relays. I actually I only need one relay. So I found I found this online. I think I got it from Adafruit or something. I uh, can't remember. So I got this, and that works too. Um, so this is kind of like the, the setup as it is. So the next step was, how do I make this web enabled? So the natural process progression from there was like, everything is on Arduino. There's got to be some shield that I can get that, you know, since I don't need a, I don't need a, a, a relay shield anymore. I probably, it's probably an Ethernet shield or something out there. Lo and behold, there is a, an, an Ethernet shield. Uh, and it requires, so basically, um, and Dave Abberton was teaching a little small little class about how to program the, Ethernet, the Ethernet shield. Uh, so, okay, fine, I'll try and, I'll try and, uh, I went that, I looked for that, and uh, I basically did a little bit of programming. So basically, with Ethernet shield, you could, like, uh, include the Ethernet library, uh, and you could basically program whatever's coming in. So you can do stuff like, uh, um, open a socket, or close a socket, or open a web page, or whatever, stuff like that. Uh, turns out there is actually a very easy to use uh, library out there called is the Webduino. Webduino, uh, uh, I think it's called the Web Webduino something. Uh, where is it? Is it here? Mm. Okay. So there was a Webduino library you can just in include, and that kind of gave me ability. It became a bit more easier to use with, web, with the Webduino. You can basically program a small little web server. So with the Webduino uh, library, I included it as part of my my my, uh, my program, and then I basically was able to like, okay, if a, if a request came in for slash open dot json, uh, I will return this amount of text. So if you look at the code; it looks something like this. Um, so I have like a little bit of like page header, how the page header looks like. So it's all HTML basically. <laughs> so it's like all oh, escape HTML. I'm sure it works. <laughs> it's even a CSS mm, font. Font family, Arial. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then basically, if I get, so at the very bottom, you see that if if a command was, so I, I listened to an IP, uh, I be begin by listening to a, a MAC address and, and a fixed IP, because on the internet shield, it doesn't have a DHCP, you gotta assign a fixed IP to it. Uh, so it sets up a default, default URL, so if you go to that, the root, path you actually call home home command home command which is basically index which will load index or html or open the html and open the json so i wanted like even a json api for this so like something make it really uh, hackable uh, 
uh, and so basically it was exposed to the into the, into the so I put it in uh, at the hackerspace. I had an Ethernet cable connected to it. Uh, it was connected to the to the to the uh, network in hackerspace. So anyone with who knows the IP address of this guy can just open the page and just click a button and basically trigger the door open. Uh, one of our one of our guys there, uh, Bob Longjing, went as far as uh, mapping a uh, Linux shortcut key on his on his key, on his on his laptop to basically fire off that. A uh, curl command. <laughs> so if someone was at the buzzer, he was like, wait, I'll do this. And, he, and basically, guy could come in. So um, that was kind of cool. So, th and, but then, because this thing needs to be secure, I got to find a way to secure this, right? This, this thing is just so, in this, is, this shit is not secure. You got to secure it. So thankfully, the Ethernet Shield uh, also supports like basic, basic off. So bas uh, basic authentic, uh, basic off uh, on, uh, on uh, HTTP basic off. So you could basically pass in a credential. Of course, I, I don't check in the authentication key online, but you know, but in the actual implementation, there is there. Uh, so this is built and, and, and pushed to the Arduino, and then and that's it. It could work. So basically, that's in a nutshell how you a very quick way to of setting this up a, a simple web page uh, that could basically do uh, that could basically do this right. And uh, this is how, how it kind of is wired up. So there's a little button and there's infrared sensor there. With the Ethernet shield, it kind of talks to this guy. It was a bit of a, uh, a it was a bit of a work trying to figure out how to interrupt it such that when the button is pressed, the web server will still continue to work. So that was kind of like a bit of a um, uh, crazy thing going on there. So once I got it working, so the next thing I thought was, ah, let's put this online. <laughs> Let's try and make expose this to the rest of the world, right? Uh, so that you know that the people outside it. So the, 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 the scenario I was thinking about is, uh, what if someone comes to hackerspace in in uh, and at that particular day no one is there, right? We want to be able to remotely like phone home and say, okay, press the button, you can go in now, kind of thing. So I was thinking, how do I do this? So one way one way to do this was actually do uh, port forwarding. Uh, that's uh, blah blah blah. Is it here somewhere? Okay, yeah. So a few ways you can make your IoT be visible online is choosing port forwarding. So you could like uh, port nine thousand two or nine thousand whatever, and you port port forward to this IP address from your router. You can configure it such that you port forward that request to port eighty on a on this particular machine inside, uh, which is okay, you know. Um, at the time, at the, at the old hackerspace, we actually had IPv6 globally addressable, which is pretty cool. So we could like, uh, we could, if we have IPv6 outside, you could actually uh, just call to this particular address and you can, you can talk right to, to that device inside, your, inside the thing. Unfortunately, the Ethernet shield doesn't support IP, IPv6, which also kind of sucks. But there was a way. There is a way. So basically, we used a, 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 we already did, what I did was to set up a, a Raspberry Pi as a bridge, and so it became an IPv6 bridge that will forward the request on our Apache web server to the Arduino inside, which is crazy. Um, yeah, so, and how much time do I have? You still have time. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be a short demo, man. So from there, I was thought, okay, putting it online is kind of fun, but let's try and make it a proper web app, like, like with, you know, because since we have a a uh, door access system which actually has a pin number. Let's try and replicate that interface, right? Because right now it's like just press open or even with you know the H HTTP uh, basic password, uh, it's kind of insecure. You want to be able to make it such that you can register, it can lock like who is the one making the call, right? So one, I thought, I thought my idea was to create like a little number pad online. And uh, sorry, I can't show you the number pad because they took the website down. So unfortunately, maybe they thought it was a security risk. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. So you, so I created a number pad. You can still find a web app, uh, application on uh, the, on GitHub. Oops, not stalkers. <laughs> the other one, yeah. So and this page is down also. You can't see it. Uh, this is a really bad demo. <laughs> so it's written in PHP. Uh, so you can use this to have a look at it. So basically, so you have a web application outside, outside of our network. And what it does is that when a, uh, so it exposes a little number pad, so we press a button, it calls uh, a, a JSON API, 
uh, using jQuery. So you, uh, you basically write a simple web, basic web app. Uh, and make and using using jQuery, it makes a uh, a call to your web application web server, and on your Apache web server, we have a reverse proxy that will actually talk to an IPv6 address internally on our on, in 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 the hackerspace itself, which then in turn calls the door and tells the door to open up. Yeah. So that's kind of like I don't have a diagram. So this is does it make sense? Does it make sense to you? Okay. So uh, all this could actually be replaced when, with a Raspberry Pi. So a Raspberry Pi, you know, as, as you know, is like a little uh, $40, $50 little uh, credit card size thing. You can just install. It's a full Linux stack on it, which is pretty cool. So as, as for me, as a web developer, uh, working with Linux is like, that's my comfort zone. Working on C and processing, that's like, what the hell is going on there? Uh, so for me, it was like, OK, Raspberry Pi, I can now do stuff on the Raspberry Pi, and that could kind of uh, work. Uh, so for me, one of the, little, small, one of the nice projects to ha I thought we, we felt was pretty cool to have was to have like a we webcam uh, in Hackerspace. So this is the second project that I did uh, in Hackerspace, which is like using a webcam to spy on, no, not spy on people, to, have a, <laughs> to, to find out whether there are actually people at Hackerspace. Right? You, don't want, you don't want strangers to come to Hackerspace or visitors from overseas, and they knock on the door and no one's there. You want to have a way to, hey, is anyone at Hackerspace? Uh, I don't know. Let's check. And you can use this to kind of use the webcam to kind of like have a sense of who's there and stuff like that. So the project looks, um, the final, I'll show you the final form, how it looks like. Uh, it looks a bit like this. So uh, over here is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, on top of it is the Raspberry Juice, which is uh, a little, uh, which could, has, which could control two servos. And on, mounted on this is a USB camera, a basic USB camera. So the USB camera is hooked up to the USB port. Uh, using I, I2C, I was able to talk to the Raspberry Juice and make it turn the servos. They could like pan and tilt and have a sense of who is at hackerspace, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, so simply that. And... Uh, because so the software that is running behind it is called this thing called MJPEG, M MJPEG uh, streamer, MJPG streamer, yeah, which is uh, very nice. It also has uh, a, 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 a it also has a build for the ARM chips, so you can you run this on the Raspberry Pi. I think you can just do app get install if I'm not wrong. So you just want the USB, you you want to hook up any USB. Uh, camera to it is pretty simple. So once you start it as a daemon, you actually have a web You have a web page that is available to you where you can either download a motion JPEG or a snapshot JPEG, so which is pretty cool. Uh, the current form of this right now looks something like this. Here's something that Kai Henry uh, wrote, uh, something he used to check on his parents. So this is something that we kind of like can flip through and get a sense. Right, so this one, uh, so he, he wrote a fair bit of stuff around it. But basically, what this is that does right now is is pushing frames, It's pushing frames to the internet. So it's, so the first version of this was more like uh, grabbing uh, I, um, a web application outside of the of the hackerspace, uh, reaching into hackerspace and pulling a frame out. This is more like a push is a push mechanism now where it takes a, it takes a frame and pushes it to a web application outside of the of of hackerspace. Um, but the other form that we had was something like this, which had a uh, yeah, which has a servo, a pan and tilt. It could have, it could have a sense of who's there and stuff like that. So yeah, the USB camera. So um, so the, the, the other than MJPEG streamer, there's another one called GNU Motion. So if you want to, uh, with, with motion, it's kind of nice because it also includes a timestamp. So it is really good to set up as a uh, like a security camera, right? So you want you want. So I kind of set this up on my girlfriend's shop. So it kind of like she used to uh, check what's going on at the shop. It's kind of nice. It's pretty easy to set up. Uh, you can demonize it as well, which which makes it easy. Um, with Raspberry Pi, with the Raspberry Pi, you can also get a Pi Cam. Uh, Pi Cam is kind of like a, a camera that could has a, that you can just plug into the, the Raspberry Pi itself, like this, right? So it just plugs it right in. 
Um, but the problem with this is that it's a kind of like a proprietary interface. So you need to like, most, in most cases, I don't think it's proprietary, but anyway, it's, you need to, you, so most software out there, like MJPEG Streamer uh, and Motion, and they're not built for, to work with this natively. You probably need to do, recompile it just to make sure it works, right? Um, yeah, and then once you have this, you, you can have access to a couple of, once you have this installed, you have a couple. You have access to a couple of command line stuff like recipe still, recipe vid, which helps you capture video or still images, which is also quite cool. So a lot of these are command line uh, interfaces. Um, but what's uh, you can also write software. So basically, in order for your web application to, to get to talk to on a Raspberry Pi, in order to get a web application to talk to your hardware or whatever, the GPIO pins, you basically make a web application, like say running PHP for example, call a command line. Uh, so you basically compile your stuff that you, that you need to, uh, need, that needs to work in the, in the command line interface, use your PHP application or Go application, call a command line, and then you will basically get access to all these things. Uh, on PHP, it's pretty simple, you can just do sudo uh, PHP dash s. You don't even need Apache at all. You just run a standalone built-in web server, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so making it available online. You can also do one one final thing I want to show talk about is SSH tunneling. So basically, uh, Kai Henry wrote a little uh, port forwarding thing, uh, which you can cut, which you can also use. So with this, I could actually do something as simple as now uh, SSH to HSG Pi. I'm actually uh, talk call, uh, machine doing SSH session to his server, which then forwards to the Raspberry Pi in Hackerspace itself. So this is actually the Raspberry Pi in Hackerspace. Uh, yeah, so that's actually all I have. That's all. Any questions? Uh, any questions? No? Yes? Do you have to do anything to get the Logitech camera to work with the Raspberry Pi? Doesn't they don't have to? Because no, uh, the MJPEG streamer could detect most uh, US. I think we could take all the USB USB cameras. So there's a list of cameras that they work with. Is it? Yeah, I think they have. They, exp they yeah yeah. I think actually any any USB based camera should work. Yeah, which is kind of cool. I think you have a co common protocol. I think it's probably a. Yeah, there is common. Yeah, it's a yeah. common. Yeah. yeah, that's why actually the supporting all the USB is that complex that you have a lot of common endpoints. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Easiest, I mean USB is easiest, uh, but you gotta be careful about the power rating. Cause when I on on my Raspberry Pi, I actually had to, I I actually use a Wi-Fi, actually a wi a Wi-Fi uh, dongle on it, over here. So you gotta make sure you have you have your power your power to the Raspberry Pi is enough to. Uh, uh, power both the devices, basically the Wi-Fi uh, dongle as well as your USB camera. But I think with Raspberry Pi two, it shouldn't be a problem anymore. Uh, I think the power, the, the you know, it's it's yeah. Also, the frame rate was really bad with Raspberry Pi one with the USB webcam. Yeah. I, when I was working on it for the underwater vehicle, it was like three FPS on a good day. So I, I guess it might be better on the Raspberry Pi two. I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the hackerspace website, the main main site. Ah, wait. Where you go? Yeah. The image at the back, the banner is the latest uh, image from hackerspace. Yeah. It's so captured from the same camera. Okay. So yeah. Refresh the. <laughs> what do you do? It's just it's we remove the hash yeah. bar, right? Let's try this. No file found. The first file. Yeah, there you go. The first file. Yep. So that's the camera. So if you guys are interested in going to space, right? Just check the site. If there are lights uh, in the image, make sure someone's there. <laughs> right now, everyone's at GitCamp. Yeah. You got a couple over there right now, actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's actually working on the uh, challenge right now from there. Really? Nice. That's cool. Yeah. So the next step is uh, face recognition or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
there were so many ideas they were thrown around. They were thinking about face recognition. They were thinking about some like uh, I was I was thinking about like a like a projector that would project onto the glass door. The whole hacker space had a glass door, right? Where they're projecting onto the glass door and then you like touch on it, you know. And even like a, a I was even I have an idea of a Bluetooth, uh, uh, Bluetooth LE kind of thing or RFID reader. And then uh, it was like it was even a, a crazy idea of doing like uh, putting a uh, Kinect, Kinect camera on top and just do like a para para dance, sakura dance <laughs> to open the door. So there were a lot of crazy ideas, right? But the question is, um, I did this project uh, initially because uh, I once I was trying to experiment with different things. I took an iterative approach as I did with any software development. I iterative approach to building it uh, one step at a time, enhancing it further and further. Uh, it came to a point, and it, the setup. In the if you if you notice the setup itself is actually very raw, is not deliberately polished, is not uh, in a nicely encased project box enclosure or whatever. The reason is I want people to I want to encourage people to hack on it. This is where it, where it was where it ended up eventually on the old hacker space, right on top, right next to the entrance, right. So this is kind of like where it stood for the longest time, uh, where it was for the longest time, and even the other one that was uh, up on top. It was deliberately, I deliberately left it un, 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 unenclosed because I want to encourage, encourage people at Hackerspace to continue to work on it, um, which I hope they would eventually one day. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the basic tenor of it. If you, any one of you here, like to get involved, there are lots, uh, I've, all, all my projects are, are online. Um, this little uh, door hack. You can find it on Mike Cheng slash uh, HSG Door Hack, and there's also the Cam Stalker, which is a little web app I wrote that could interface with Cam dot uh, uh, Cam dot Hackerspace dot com, and then of course the dot, the number pad uh, system that was used here. So quite a lot of this, all these all these projects are actually online and, and open source. If you would like to continue work on them, be my guest. You want to go and hack on the. Raspberry Pi at the Hackerspace, be my guess. So right now, if you go to Hackerspace, the infrared door access system was actually written by me. It's still running there. So I did this project in 2012. It's still kind of like in there somewhere. So in some state or other. The Raspberry Juice has kind of burnt out, so unfortunately. So I can't do the pen tilt anymore. But yeah, but it's kind of nice when it was working. Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs>